Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? It is 1.28 a.m. on this, what is tonight? Friday night going into Saturday. It is 31 degrees outside. It's a clear night. Stars are out. And I am exhausted. I have been doing stuff all day long. And uh, it's just been a, it's been a long day. It's been a just got some news. Just a couple hours ago, that a really good friend of ours passed away. I just sat there in front of my computer like an hour ago and I, like everybody, I was just like on Facebook and everybody was posting these like really nice things about him, you know, and it's crazy because I was talking, you know, just the other day in my vlog about like truly good people <clears throat> and he was like a truly good person and um Like, Alex and I must have met him, like, right when we first started dating. Um, he was actually, he's a DJ here in town, like, a really popular DJ. And had worked for, like, the number one radio station for a long time. And worked at, like, all the clubs in Indianapolis. And um, just a really, really genuinely, like, awesome guy. I'm kind of in shock. Like, it just is so bizarre. And I honestly, I haven't seen him in so long. Um, because I haven't, like, gone out or anything, you know? And, um, that's typically when I would see him. I feel like I, I ran into him somewhere. <sighs> it just seems so surreal. You know, there was a long part of Alex and I's relationship that was like, we would go out four or five nights a week. And there was like 10 to 15 of us that are all really close friends and we all went out together and and uh, we were all like really close with a couple of the DJs here in town and and he was like one of the first DJs that I met. He was actually supposed to DJ my high school reunion the summer and it never happened because he and I were, he was, getting ready to turn 50 and he and I are like really close in age obviously and um <laughs> I can just remember like going into a club and Alex and I would walk in and he'd be like DJing and he would come over the microphone and be like Peter and Alex are in the house and just a really nice guy and always happy it's surreal you know I think it's really surreal when like contemporaries of yours start to pass um like a true Indianapolis icon like he was like really a part of the city and really like an asset to the city and he was like did all kinds of stuff from like sporting event stuff to just like going out and part of the radio stations and I mean he just was like such a huge part of like everything that was you know cultural in Indianapolis The 
sat there and I was like reading all these Facebook posts of things that people were putting about all their memories of him. And I just like sat there and I just like bawled for like 45 minutes. Just was. Whenever, like, somebody passes away, I always remember this thing that, like, years and years ago, this family that I worked with in treatment, their son died of uh, sudden sniffing death syndrome, um, huffing, computer duster in the pool, and I was really close to the family, and, um... I remember later they like did this, like they had this video put together with like his friends and it was kind of like an educational video. Like kind of explaining the hazards of sudden sniffing death syndrome. And um, I used to go speak with their, his parents a lot at places and I would tell my story and they would tell their story afterwards. And, um, I remember in this video, one of his friends, like they talked, like they interviewed each friend, like, you know, there's like this music playing in the background. They interviewed like each friend about like, when they like found out that he had passed away. I like remember that day, I was on call and um, My supervisor called me and she said that his mom had called the pager and I was carrying the pager, or she had called in and I was carrying the pager, I was on call, and that he had been taken to the emergency room. <clears throat> and um, she said, can you go over to them? I had like literally just left work and she was like, can you go over to the emergency room and um, and and help in any way that you possibly can? And I walked in and I saw his mom standing outside the emergency room. Like I like went in there, they like led me right back. And his mom was like standing in the, emer like right outside of the room in the emergency room. And she like had her, her like hand over her mouth and she like turned and she like started walking away. And I walked up to her like not knowing what was going on. And they were like, taking like the everything off of him at that point like the tubes and stuff and um like like all of a sudden I was like oh my god like and I like she just kind of like ran into me like and gave me this huge hug and she just was bawling and she was like the disease was too strong I'll never forget she said that to me she was like the disease was too strong he just didn't he didn't know how powerful his addiction was and, um, the weekend that I met my ex and um, I just remember that weekend was so weird every year like after his parents would always bring on his birthday they would always bring in chocolate chip cookies because those were his favorites. My friend used to DJ right down at this bar right down here called the Casbah. I think it's called, well, Usual Suspects. But, um, I mean, he DJ 
jade everywhere in Indianapolis at one point or another. Um, but I remember watching that video and there was this one kid, like I can see him in my head, this one friend of his, and he was like, he was like, I got the news and he was like, I pulled my car over to the side of the road. He was like, it just felt so surreal. He was like, I was never gonna see him again, like, or talk to him again or, and I think, you know, like, that's one of the weirdest things about death that, like, we don't talk about. Like, we always talk about, like, you know, grieving or how to get through stuff or. But I think that's, like, one of the weirdest things, you know, that, like, you never know. Well, like, with me, I mean, like, my mom was, you know, she had been in a coma, so... In a, in a weird way, I kind of felt like I had said goodbye to her before she passed away, because I hadn't talked to her, you know, like, she had been in a coma. But, like, with my aunt, I remember, like, I didn't know that was the last time that I was going to see her, you know? I didn't know that the last time that I talked to her was the last time that I was going to talk to her. Same with my uncle. And... I think that's like one of the things that we don't talk about is like really say, telling people like what we think about them or how much they mean to us, you know, because you never know when or if you're going to see that person again. I remember talking to him about, I can see this one conversation we were having, it was, it was, we talked forever, he was like, we used to always do these New Year's things too, and he was always the DJ there, and we, um, but I talked to him one night, because he, you know, we were the same age, and I loved like the whole club kid scene and stuff like that, and he had like gone to New York City for a couple years, and he had, I mean, he knew like, the DJ Mark Ronson and stuff. I mean, that he was like good friends. I think they went to his wedding and stuff. Um, like, I mean, he knew famous big DJs. Like, he was known like around the world. And I remember talking to him because I was like real obsessed with like the whole like club kid scene and stuff. And he was like, yeah, he was like, I was in New York. He was, I'll just play everything down. Like, it was no big deal. He was like, yeah, I was in New York at that point. I was like, you were? And he was like, yeah, I used to do a night at the tunnel, and, um, and I can remember talking about, like, those different, like, clubs that he had, like, worked in and gone out to and stuff like that. We were, like, a year apart in high school, and he was, like, from the south side, and I was from the north side. So it was weird, because we knew, like, a lot of people in common. so loved by so many people. I mean, I couldn't, literally, I was going through Facebook and it was just like one after another after another. I mean, they, it was like no, there was no skipping and like, it was like one tribute after another, after another, after another, you know? And, um, just to imagine that like, you affected that many people positively. me and he told me 
and he's like, I just can't take anymore. Like, Alex has lost so many people that he is, like, pretty close with in the last year or two. And, you know, like, before that, Alex really hadn't lost anybody except for his grandfather. And... You know, and then his friend earlier this year was shot. And his friend Jason last year passed away. That really, like, has still affected him because... I don't think Alex had had a friend like that ever in his life. You know, like, a really, really just, like, solid guy friendship... I don't think he, like, he had, had he has good guy friends, but, like, you know, that they all went out together in college and stuff like that. I mean, like, he and Jason were, like, really close. Like, Jason looked out for him like he was, like, his older brother and always was giving him advice and suggestions. And, I mean, he was just such a great person. And I remember going to that memorial, you know, like, well, we went to his funeral in Kentucky, but I can remember, like, Alex had come up with this whole thing, because he was speaking at his memorial, and, um, they had, like, they hired DJs and stuff, because Jason was really into electronic dance music, and so they, like, had local DJs here come and play, and it was at the Pavilion downtown, and, um, They had, like, food. It was really nice. But they had, like, like six or seven speakers. And Alex was one of the people that they had asked to speak because he was so close with him and stuff. And I can remember Alex was, like, so nervous to speak at this thing. His mom came. Alex's mom showed up. And Alex was, like, so nervous to speak. And I can remember, like, the day before we were talking. And he said, um, he was, like, running it by me. He's like, I don't really know what to say. And he's like, I kind of scripted this thing. And I was like, okay, well, tell me what you what you have and he like started reading me this thing and I just didn't say a whole lot and he was like it was like about a fashion show or something I don't know and he was like what do you think and I said and I can remember I was like well I mean if that's what you want to say but I was trying to be like real nice about it right it just did, didn't seem very personal to me you know and I said are you like having a hard time like getting personal about this and he was he like got real upset he was like I just don't really know what to say and I'm scared if I get up there I'll sound stupid and I was like baby you loved him like you can't say anything stupid like you know and he's like so you don't think that I should say this and I said I think you should say whatever you want to say babe I think it'll be it'll be wonderful I said but you loved Jason like you should get up there and just speak from your heart and he wrote this whole thing out and I remember he got up there and he like had it and he like he like tucked it away in his pocket and he just like started speaking from his heart and it was beautiful I mean it was like <clears throat> he read a little bit of like what he had written and then like the rest he just like just completely spoke from his heart and it was just absolutely beautiful I mean it was just I was just really like my husband's a beautiful person, but I was really um, just, it's hard sometimes, you know, in moments like that to really put together how you feel about somebody, you know, and like, um, I remember when I gave the eulogy at my mom's funeral, like people came, I, I, and I typed it up, like what I wanted to say, there was like an outline to it. I have it somewhere in my house. I always like want to bring it out and read it on a video so I'll have it forever but I remember what I said I mean the whole thing was based around movies because my mom and I loved movies so much but I can remember later people were just so nice and they were like oh my god that was the most beautiful eulogy and I didn't even really remember a lot of what I said it was just like I got up there and I just kind of like I do remember I got up there before I even started speaking or reading from my eulogy um you know, my mom was somebody that, she had a few close friends, and she, you know, a lot of people that she, like, acquaintances throughout her life, and people in sobriety and stuff, but she was very lonely, too, like, 
she would always, I'd say, well, mom, why don't you call so-and-so and go do this? Or why don't you call so-and-so and go do that? And she'd say, no, I don't really want to bother them. I don't want to burden them. Or, you know, like, they're married. They have a husband. Like, they're probably doing something tonight, you know? And I'd be like, mom, you're not a burden. Just call them, you know? Like, and she'd say, oh, you're probably right. <clears throat> But she was lonely, and she would say it a lot to me. She would talk a lot about how lonely she was, and um, she'd say, I just don't feel like I have a lot of people in my life. And I remember at the church, it was the church that I was raised in, and it was my mom's church, R.A. Deemer Lutheran. It doesn't exist anymore. They closed it down. I don't know why, but it's sad. It was a beautiful church. Um... It had, like, a second floor. It wasn't, like, a big second floor, but it probably had, like, six pews up there, you know, that were probably 20 feet each. And I looked up, and it was literally standing room only in the back of the church and on the second floor. And I just lost it. I mean, it was, like, every seat was taken in that church. And... I just lost it and I said, my mother never knew how loved she truly was. You know, like if she could see this, like this would mean so much to her, you know? And like, I think that's the thing is like, sometimes we don't really know like how much people really care about us or people don't know how much we really care about them because we don't let them know, we don't say, you know? And why is that? Why don't we tell people, like, what are we afraid of, you know? Why are we afraid to let people know how much they mean to us? I say this a lot in my videos, but, you know, there was, like, a long period of time when, like, Tanya and I didn't say, like, I love you to each other. We say it all the time now, you know? And doing this gratitude book, this magic book, I said to her the other night, she got in the car, and I said, you know, I said, I feel like I need to say something to you. And she, because... She, she in one way or another has like shown up a couple times on my list, you know, because you're not supposed to repeat stuff, but, um, so I said to her, I said, you know, like, like I, the car was parked in her driveway and I looked, I turned and I looked at her because it says something in the book about looking at somebody and telling them how grateful they are. And I said, I just need you to know like truly how like grateful I am for you and for your friendship. Like you've always had my, and she started like, and she's like, oh babe, that's just, you. I said, no, let me say this. And I said, you have been there for me for 24 years. I said, you have had my back. I said, you and your husband and your son took me into your home as my second family. You know, like, I mean, they have, she's been just my ride or die, you know? And, and so she's like, then when I was done, she like stopped and she said some things back to me. And it was just like this really pure moment, you know? And, um. And it didn't need to be said. Like, I I know that she knows those things, that I feel that way. And um, and I know that she, how she feels about me. And, you know, it didn't need to be said. But it, I felt like it needed to be said, you know. And, and it was like, like, I said some things to Alex one night. And then we were talking. And then he was kind of joking. And then, like, the next day, you know, he said to me, like, we were coming... Like, we're going to brunch or coming back from brunch, I think. Or dinner with Jason and Melissa. I can't remember. But he said, he, he said, he looked at me and he said, I just want you to know how truly grateful I am for you. And you're like the best husband. And he just was, it was such a genuinely sweet sentiment. And I just think that we need to tell each other more about all of us. You know, like how much we mean to one another. And, um... And not just because we don't know when the last time is we're going to see somebody. Yes, I mean, that is true. But also because... Well, hell, if people mean something to us, we should all probably let them know. Don't you think? I have leftover coffee today. like Alex was talking to his mom tonight on the phone and 
So she was like speaking to me through the phone. She's like, I'm doing my gratitude book. I'm one day eight. And it made me so happy. Like I was like, that's so cool, you know? And his mother is definitely somebody that tells people in her life how much they mean to her. I mean, and I feel like his family is very much that way. Um, I mean, like love is definitely their uh, language of theirs. Like that they speak loudly, you know? And, and, um, and I have to say, I feel very blessed that I came from a family that was very similar to that. You know, my dad and my stepmom and my mom, like all three of them, you know, and my aunt and my uncle, like Caroline. I mean, we're just people that say a lot, like, I love you and how much you mean to me. You know, I mean, we, that's just who we are. And that's, I guess, who we were when they, when they were around, you know, but like... I am a person that needs to hear it, you know? I need to hear, I love you, and um, I think those are nice words. I think, like, you know, I never understood this whole idea of, like, like, I've known so many people that are, like, I mean, like, Alex kind of even said this when we first started dating, like, oh, I don't say I love you to somebody, like, right away, you know, like, I understand that people get confused by the, like, romantic, I love you, and that if you say it to somebody, it's like, okay, now they don't know what to do with that, right? I get that. But, like, I've never understood, like, our fear of saying those words to somebody. Like, I've never understood... I mean, I think a lot of people have, like, past history with those words, and those words are manipulative and whatever, but maybe it's because I don't come from that, so, like, that's not my history. That, to me, like, I feel like, I mean, we're more than willing to put out how we despise people and how we hate people and what we don't like and what really makes us upset, and we're more than willing to put all of that out there in the world. I don't know why we are afraid, so afraid to say what we like and what we love, you know? <laughs> maybe that sounds kind of hippy-dippy and maybe it is, you know, I don't know, maybe I am. I've always been somewhat of an idealist, I guess. A way to start off the vlog, huh? <laughs> Some serious stuff. I finished my um, Christmas murder mystery last night. The Christmas uh, cozy mystery by Leslie Meyer. It's called Mistletoe. The Mistletoe Murder. I actually ended up really liking it. I gave it four stars. I mean, it wasn't the greatest book in the entire world, but four stars for that was pretty good. Um, and. Yeah, I really ended up liking it. It was cute. It was real cute. But, the, like, the murder mystery was good, too. Like, it was enough of a thriller that it felt like an episode of, like, my, uh, like, Murder, She Wrote, you know? Like, I like it when it's, like, scary enough that I'm kind of like, oh, my God, what's going to happen? Like, kind of scary. But at the same time, not, like, blood and guts and gore. Like, I don't mind that if I'm reading a book that that's, you know, in the book. Excuse me. <laughs> but I don't, um... Like, if it's, like, a cozy mystery, I don't love that, you know? So, I finished that, and then I started Later Gator by Jana Delion. It's the ninth book in the Misfortune series. And I am, like, two and a half hours into that right now. And I'm listening to it at two times five speed, which is real easy for that book. I could probably listen to it at three times speed, but I'm kind of trying to just enjoy it. Um, instead of rush through it. I might finish that book tonight, so we'll see. Um, tomorrow I want to make a bunch of videos. Today I didn't do a whole lot. I, like, slept in today, and then <coughs> I, um, what did I do? Oh, I did this review um, of that La Colombre coffee that Michael from Pathology had shown on his vlog that I bought at Meyer, the Meyer last night. And then I, I compared it to 
I was like Starbucks versus La Colombare coffee or whatever. So go check out that review, which is nice because I have all that iced coffee at home. I just remember that. I kind of forgot that I had that coffee at home. So I have all that. We're gonna go into Zionsville and look at the Christmas lights because I haven't done that like in a week or two. So, um, did it stopped. I didn't even notice it. Um, I knew I was close to the end, but I didn't <laughs> even, I just kind of forgot that I was close to the end. But anyway, so I came home and I uploaded, oh no, 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 I, cause I did the review at home. So I uploaded the review, well I rendered it and I started uploading it. And I had just like screwed around the house and not done a whole lot. I've been reading this book that came in the mail that's called um, Here, Here the Whole Time. It's actually really good and it's about this kid Philippe. I talked about it on my book vlog today so I don't want to repeat what I talked about over there. So if you want to hear about it and you want to hear about um, uh, Later Gator and you want to hear about uh, Mistletoe Murder, go check out my book vlog because I, I vlogged for 22 minutes talking about all of that. But um, I'm reading this new book. Oh, I actually bought four new um, graphic novels, too, that should be here Sunday. So anyway, I uh, and I'm not going to repeat that whole conversation because I told it over there. But um, so I'm reading this book called, I'm not that far into it, here the whole time, about this kid named Philippe. And like he lives in this apartment comp complex. He calls it a complex, but it's more like a building or two buildings or something, like tall buildings. Um, he lives in this apartment complex with his mom, who's an artist in Brazil. The whole book has been translated. It's by Push Publishing, which does a lot of LGBTQIA plus YA novels. They're like David Levithan, who's written a lot with John Green, or he wrote with John Green, Will Grayson, Will Grayson, and he wrote that Dash and Lily's, you know that Dash and Lily, like they did a Christmas, he did a Christmas book with her or something. Um... Dash and Lily's Christmas List or something. I can't remember what it is. But anyway, um, I love David Levithan's right. David Levithan's writing. He wrote so many great books. Um, and he hasn't really put anything out in a while. I don't know why. But he is like, I think one of like the board of member the board of directors for Push Publishing or something. And they put out really great novels. So I got this book not knowing it was a push publishing novel. And it's about this kid named Philippe. And he I, he um defines himself as being well heavier. He calls himself fat, but being heavier. And I relate to this book so much. Like this kid is me when I was his age. Like wearing a shirt to the pool. I talked all about it on my book vlog today, so like I'm not gonna repeat it over here. But like really like self-conscious of his body image. And I so relate to the book. Anyway, so he's got a crush on this other guy that lives in his complex whose parents go out of town over winter break, so he has to come and stay with them. Um, and they used to be like, pool, like they were friends in the pool, like they would swim together and play pirates and mermaids and stuff like that in the pool. So anyway, when they were like eight, and now they're like in high school, I think he's like 17 or something. Um, yet again, another book that I wish existed when I was growing up. It's great, it's like a really good book. So, Do you know that's like one question that I never, like I never have parents that like reach out to me that ask me like, like what are some really good like young adult books that you know like if, well that's not true. My friend that, my, well I mean like people that I like on YouTube and stuff, but like my friend of mine that, um, my sober friend who has a son that's gay, he was like I want to get him a bunch of books, like what are some suggestions that you have and I gave him like, Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe. I gave him like a couple of them. And, um, so anyway, like that's a question I don't get very often. I guess people like on booktube just kind of know what those books are. And maybe it doesn't matter. I don't know. I just, for me, like, I just didn't have anything to identify with. And then I dressed so different. And, you know, I was always kind of like, like, I can remember, like, the first character that I ever kind of identified with in a weird way was Ducky from Pretty in Pink. But then I was almost kind of felt like I was more like Andy from Pretty in Pink. Like, I really more identified with Andy 
than I did with Ducky. But we, like my friends and I, we were very much like them in high school. Very different. Wore the vintage clothes, listened to the different music. Like we were, that was us. Like even driving around, when she drives around, she looks at houses and I mean, this is, where do you think this comes from? And she's like, don't you just love looking at beautiful houses? I mean, like we did that in high school. We drove around these gorgeous old neighborhoods, like in Williams Creek, like Forest Boulevard and uh, Morningside Road and stuff like that. These massive, massive million dollar, $5 million homes that are just have been there since, you know, the sixties and the seventies and they're gorgeous. We would drive around and look at those houses. This is so pretty, you guys. I just want to show you this really quick, talking about cozy mysteries. So this is Zinesville, Indiana. You can see it's like little houses, little, this is Black Dog Books, which I've always wanted to go to. There's little art galleries here. Isn't this so cute? Look at this. Noah Grant's Grill House and Oyster Bar. It's a really nice restaurant. Little flower shop. You see that the brick road, it's Brick Road. Little clock in the middle of the road. Isn't this so cute? I love Zinesville. I judged the uh, beauty pageant. It was at the high school right up the street. So we would eat. We, well, we ate one night on the strip. And it was so good. It was such a good restaurant. The woman that was like in charge of us, who's like, I've known her for a while. And, um, oh, look at this. This is so pretty right here. Look, they have all kinds of lights right there. Look at that. Do you see? See, I love all this. But anyway, she loved like really, really good restaurants. And so she took us to um, like they took us to Fantastic because, you know, like they paid for our dinners. And so she really wanted to like introduce because a lot of the people were from out of town. Well, not a lot, but two. two? two people were from out of town that were judges. She wanted to um, like introduce us to like some really good restaurants. And so she took us to places I had never, uh, well, we went to the Stacked Pickle one night. That's not my favorite place in the entire world. I don't even think it exists anymore. But we went there one night because she had another place. Look at that, it's so pretty. Do you see this with just like the wreath on the door and stuff? She took us, we were going supposed to go somewhere else. And, um, that ended up like not going through like a reservation or something. These houses and these little side streets here, like they, um, like each one of them is like a city, like a city block kind of, and you wouldn't guess it by looking at them, but these are literally like a million five. Like they're gorgeous, if not more than that. Like look at this house right here. This is so cute. Look at that. Can you see it with the big wood door on it and stuff? So cute, aren't they? I didn't, I need to put those, I bought Christmas lights at, um, oh my God, look at this. This one is so pretty. Here, I'm gonna drive by real slow so you guys can see it. Dun, I love, oh my God, you guys, look at this. <gasps> Look at this. Oh, they have sweaters on their front door and everything. They have ugly sweaters, like all Christmas sweaters. All Well, they're not even ugly all over. Oh my God, that is magical. I love it. See, I could live in a little town like this <laughs> if I had a million five. <laughs> a lot of these houses have been passed down from generation to generation too because Alex used to work with this woman and she and her husband, it's called, they call it the town. Is that what they call it? The square, the town, they live, yeah, they live, the village, the village, I think is what they call it, maybe, I don't know, but anyway, well, there's also the village of West Clay and Carmel, so you call that the village, what do we call this, the town, I don't remember, but anyway, this friend of Alex's, like, some people live, like, on the main drag here, like, would that not be so cool to, like, walk right down the street to the bookstore and coffee shop, I and mean, you talk about cozy mysteries, like, I would eat that up, I would love that. And um, so Alex worked with this woman and she and her husband lived like, I just passed like 
went down the wrong street, but if we, we were one street over, we're like by her house. And um, she, like her father-in-law owned another lot because they like extended their house and he had passed away like years before and they like inherited that lot or something like that. But I was like, oh my God, I'm so jealous that you live in Zionsville. I think it's gorgeous. I love it through here. It's just like lip balm, lip balm. I thought I put some in here other than the stuff that Valerie gave me. Okay, so here's my old, here's the new lip gloss. Maybe I should put that on because that'll stay a little bit longer it's a little stickier and then I can save the lunar beauty for like when I'm really wanting to be fancy so anyway I did that and then I talked to Michael today um, on the phone I'd given him my phone number Michael from Pophology the guy that did the 14 day vlog channel or challenge of me and so I, he had emailed me and so I emailed him back and I gave him my phone number so he texted me today and he was like hey I'm available after such and such time like in the afternoon so I was running around doing all kinds of stuff so then I texted him I was like hey I'm available so call me anytime and then I was doing like a booktube video and he called like at the very end of it so when I was done, I like called him. And we talked for probably about 40 minutes on the phone. He's a super nice guy. Super, super, super nice guy. And he told me all kinds of stuff about himself and really cool guy. And um, so I'm gonna go down one night and pick him up. And we're gonna do, I don't know when. So this could be a month from now. It could be two, tomorrow. It could be two weeks. It could be six months. So when people are like, you never did that video. You said you're gonna do, I don't know. It's gonna have to be when our, when our schedules match up. So um, we are, like I'm gonna pick him up and we're gonna do a video. I actually think I'm gonna put it on my main channel though. And then, um, and then, at some point, we're gonna like go out to brunch or dinner or something. Like, uh, like he's gonna bring his wife and I'm gonna bring Alex. So yeah, he's really cool. He's really nice. It's really nice. He's like serious. Like he really wants to be like a serious YouTuber and stuff, which is so cool. And it was like I was kind of like, okay, there's somebody else here that I can kind of like get along with, you know? That like I think we see very similarly in some ways. Our, our backgrounds are very different, but. I think we see uh, like the world in kind of a similar way. I think our sense of humor are very similar. He's just a really nice guy. Um, like I was telling Tanya this, I may have already said this on here, um, but he said in his video, he's like, you know, I'm an introvert. Like I'm extroverted when I'm around people that I know. That's where there's like this new classification that's like introverted extrovert or something. Like I think I'm like classify as that, I don't know. But he said in his video, he goes, I'm an introvert. He said, you know, it takes me um, like a lot of energy to be around people. And I was like, when I heard that, I was like, oh my God, that's like me. Like, I, I feel like so similar to that. Like it takes me so much energy to be around people. And in fact, people kind of get worn out with me because like, I'll go and do something. Like this is like with my in-laws, okay? Like I love being with my in-laws. But, like, I'll be there for, like, two hours, and I start just getting, like, just being around people, talking to people. Like, they can literally talk for ten hours, right? But, like, I get drained really easily being around, like, a lot of people. Um, and it's why, like, I don't like to go to malls. I don't like to go to movie theaters. Like, if I go to a restaurant, I like to sit away from everybody. Like, a like Alex, I always say, can we have a booth so that we feel very private? Or can we sit at one where, like, we're up against a wall? Like, I don't like, if I'm in the middle of a restaurant, like, there's no reason for us to go. Um, I just, I don't enjoy it. I can't focus. I can hear everything around me. 
I haven't talked about this in a long time in here, but like I'm real hard hearing in one ear. And so like I pick up like all the, like I can hear all the conversations around me, like the background noise and stuff. And so if you're sitting in front of me and my back is to the restaurant, I'm gonna hear and wonder all about all of this back here. And I'm gonna have a really hard time focusing on the conversation that we have. So typically like, that's why for me, like if I'm sitting, so like, like even with our meetings, like on Tuesday nights, like we split up into four groups and like sometimes like we're in this huge auditorium, you know, in this church. And sometimes like if I'm like with my head faced, like facing the corner, so I can like to the other three groups, like I can't hear anything. Like I, I literally can't hear anything, you know? So, um, but I also get drained very quickly. Um, like, even just, like, going over to Melissa and Jason's and, like, getting dinner and watching a movie. Like, halfway through, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so tired. Uh, I just get drained by people very, very easily. I love being around people that I like, you know, and it's sad. It's just, like, sometimes I'm just, like, oh, my God, like, I need a power nap or something. So, when he said that, it was so weird that he said that. He's like, I, you know, like, um, I don't know. I just totally related to that a lot. But, anyway... He's a nice guy. He's a really nice guy. And, uh, yeah, so I talked to him, and then I went home, and what did I do after that? Well, I had done a booktube video, so I uploaded my vlog. It's always funny to me, because I'm like, if I don't do, like, a Peterisms video or a drama video, drama channel video, I'm always like, God, I didn't really do that much today. <laughs> you know? But, like, I still did an hour and a half vlog last night that I posted. I still did a 22-minute booktube vlog, and I did a review video. So, I did three out of six channels today. Like, that's not bad, right? But I'm always like, oh, you didn't really do anything. You didn't really do a lot today. You know what I mean? Which is so funny. Because I guess I kind of did. I did a bunch of cameos, and I love doing those. They're so much fun. And, um... Have people, like, got cameos from other people? Like, what's an average length of a cameo? You guys, my cameos are becoming so long. They're between, like, three and a half minutes and, like, seven minutes long. Not, not, not Most of them are not seven minutes. But if I get rambling about something, they are. But, like... Are like, how long are most of them? Because Alex told me, he goes, I think most of them are like 30 seconds to a minute. I was like, really? I go, who is paying money for that? Don't you want something a little bit more personal? And he was like, but Peter, he was like, yours are so long. <laughs> I'm like, well, I didn't know. Like, I don't know how long they're supposed to be. You know what I mean? Anyway, I just like to, I don't know, have fun with it. But, um, so I did those. What else did I do? Oh, I went to Yats tonight. And I got two meals because I wanted to try. And I'm really glad I did because it was so delicious. I might have to have it tomorrow night, too. I didn't even try my other meal. But I got... They have, like, four... Do they have three or they have four? They have three vegan... So, if you don't know Yats, Yats is, like... Um, well, it's local to Indiana. So, there's, like... Uh, one here. And then there's like, I guess there's one in Bloomington. Um, Y'all know Zachary Michael, the YouTuber. I like put up a fleet or no, it was on my Instagram. And he like comment, he like messaged me and he was like, oh, I loved um, Yats in Bloomington, but it was called Dats. And I was like, I didn't know that that was called Dats in Bloomington. But anyway. Um... So, I, uh, got Yats, and I got, they had, um, vegan white chili, and then they had a and b which was black beans, and caramelized corn. I got that. And the third one was spinach and mushroom etouffee and I haven't had that and I wanted to try that but I asked the guy I said which one is better like the black bean and caramelized corn or the spinach and mushroom etouffee and he was like oh because I've never had like an etouffee before I know isn't that crazy I always used to back in the day get drunk and chicken and actually I did on my main channel this is funny so I did it because I looked it up tonight I did a 
Gat's Drunken Chicken Mukbang on my Peter Mon channel. So when I went in there tonight, I was like doing my order. It's like this just a little small restaurant. There's like six of them in Indianapolis. And they're all locally owned. So like by the same person, I think. So when I went in there, it's always like the same two guys that are working. Two or three guys that are working in there. And they're very like... They're all of them real hot. <laughs> they're all so hot, these guys that work in there. They're all like bearded and they have tattoos everywhere. And they just look very like... They don't look like hipster. They look like hipsters try to be them. Do you know what I mean? Like they're the authentic real deal. And so, and they are so hot. So anyway, the guy behind that was like do, cooking the food and stuff, who's like super nice. He was like, hey, he was like, this girl that works in here, um, oh, I think her name, what, oh shoot. Julia, I think it's Julia. Juliana or Julia, he was like, she watches all of your videos. And I was like, really? And he was like, yeah. He was like, she wanted me to tell you. And he was like, I said, how did she ever find me? And he was like, um, and then I turn around, of course, there's like four people standing behind me and then I'm like super embarrassed, right? And um, so he said, she was looking up YouTube videos about people that had reviewed Yats and yours came up and then she started watching. She came in and she was like, oh my God, I watched this guy's whole channel. Like I watch all of his videos, which is so funny. So anyway, that was like really nice. That made me like, that totally made my day. It made me so happy. And um, so anyway, I got the, it was so good. I got the um, vegan white chili and then I got the vegan black beans. These are like their three, they have like probably six or seven regular meals and they have that has like chicken and uh, shrimp and stuff in it. And then they have like three vegan ones. And it comes with um, French bread that has like, well, it's like Italian French bread. It's like, you know, big loaves of bread that has like butter and this like powder stuff. That they, it's so good. The bread is so good. <clears throat> so I got extra bread as well for each of them. And I got the vegan white chili and the black bean and caramelized uh, corn. And then extra bread for both of them. Because I didn't know if Alex would want to eat some of it. He used to love Yats. He's like kind of burnt out on it. We used to go there like three or four times a week. Literally, a large order with extra bread and a, a soft drink is $8 even. <laughs> like that's how cheap it is. It's so good too. And like you're totally full when you leave there. So, um, and then I got a piece of peanut butter pie which I love peanut butter pie. And their peanut butter pie is like the best peanut butter pie in the entire world. It's like this big. Like that, it's really good. It's like, ah, peanut butter pie. I put it up on my Instagram if it's still up there if you wanna see. And I also put it on my tweet fleet. <laughs> so anyway, then I um, came home and Alex was talking to Sarah on the phone. So I ate and I have been started, oh, I started this last night, right? I could, this, I could not fall asleep last night, you guys. And I started watching this docu-series on HBO Max and it's called, uh, I was trying to help Tanya find her. She couldn't figure out her HBO Max tonight. She's like, it's not on HBO. And I was like, no, it's on HBO Max. And she's like, what's the difference? And I was like, I think HBO Max is just the app. I don't know, I have it on my iPad. And she's like, so you don't watch it on your uh, TV? And I said, no, but I think you can. I said, I think you just sign in from your TV. She couldn't figure it out. I felt so bad because she wanted to watch this documentary so bad. It's called Heaven's Gate, The Cult of Cults. Okay. Now, I remember this happening. I think it happened in, like, 98. It was, like, this mass, you know what, like, they all, they don't, they're not here anymore. I don't like to say that word on my channel. Um, YouTube doesn't like that word. So, um... But they believed, like, by taking their lives, that they would, it was like the Haley's Comet, it was some comet, it wasn't Haley's Comet, but it was some, maybe it was, I don't know. <clears throat> but by this, when this comet came by, I'm not there yet, so I don't know the facts, but this is what I remember about it. That, like, this comet, <clears throat> it had to be like that time, but I don't remember why associated with them, um, what do you call it, 
taking their lives, they would like be shot to like this UFO, which was supposedly like analogous to analogous, 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 the same as the cloud in Revelations. And then they would go and have us awake, like they would go to heaven. It was called like this awakening kind of thing. And it's so crazy, like watching this show. But it started like in the 70s, like with this guy and this girl, Doe and T. It like started with them like in the 70s. These people, like these were educated people, okay, that were in this cult. I mean, severe, like, this one woman was, like, a journalist and stuff. Like, severely educated people that were told that if they believed that they were basically, like, disciples of Jesus, that they would have to um, give up their kids. These people gave up their kids, okay, you guys? Like, they gave their kids, they, they went to their kids. This one woman on there, she's probably close to my age. She was 10 at the time. And her parents came to her and said, you know, we're going off of this organization. You will never see us again. You will never talk to us again. And you're going to go live with your grandparents. Can you, she was 10. She was 10 years old. Can you even imagine, like, how screwed up you'd be for the rest of your life? And she said she remembers saying to them, like, you're, what are you talking about? Like, a UFO is going to take you away. No, UFO is going to, because they believed a UFO was going to take them to heaven. So, anyway, it's a four-part docu-series. I'm real fascinated watching this docu-series about cults and stuff like that. If you've never watched the one on Netflix about Wild Wild Country, I'll tell you what's scary about that one, okay, is that I truly, I could have been taken by that one because, like, that one was so peaceful and serene. Like, it really wasn't, like... I mean, it was about money and stuff and that Sheila or whatever her name was, like, she was trying to get money and all this kind of stuff. But other than that, like... A lot of it was just very peaceful and like trying to live your best life and be happy, joyous, and free. Like, I think in the 70s, I could have totally, you know, been about all of that. I don't know. I don't know. Crazy world we live in, you know? Do you guys remember that happening? And then I watched one on the whole David Koresh thing. That one is so sad. Like, that is really, really sad. Um, what else? Do you know what I want to do? I want to get some more coffee creamer and I want to get some Diet Coke. I liked just sitting the other night vlogging from the house. Um, so I'm thinking like I might, not from the house, but from the parking lot at the post office. I kind of miss doing my driveway vlogs a little bit. How would you guys feel about me doing some driveway vlogs? Would you like that? Not every night, but some nights. But I miss having Diet Cokes at home. Why do I feel like I bought little Diet Cokes and I have them at home? I want a Diet Coke right now. <laughs> I do, though. I don't know where I can go drive through and get a McDonald's. is probably still open, but... Well, listen, you guys, I'm going to get off here, and I'm going to, um, I have vlogged for, like, like, 58 minutes. Oh, my God, I, I was so good. I guessed it. I went, like, 58 minutes and 16 seconds or something. So, anyway, or close to that. Um, I don't know what, like, when it stops. It stops at, like, 29 minutes and 58 seconds or 9 seconds or something. So, around there. Anyway, um, oh, Glenn Miller Orchestra, Yuletide Melody, number two. I love that. I love all that old Christmas music. So I'm going to get off here now. I'm going to listen to my audiobook. And um, I will maybe vlog for a little bit longer tomorrow night. Last night was an hour and a half. So this one's kind of like more of a catch-up one. You can catch up a little bit on both of them. Anyway, I love you guys so much. Um, and if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. Remember, you can start your day over whenever you want. So don't get, you know, super upset about things. And, um, yeah, let's put some kindness, good, and compassion and forgiveness and love out there in the world. Always lead with love, like it says in the four agreements. Um, and most importantly, 
let somebody else in your life, let somebody in your life know how much they mean to you today. Let everybody in your life know how much they mean to you today. We should start doing that more regularly, I think. I think we should. And um, I love you guys. I hope you're having an amazing Saturday. Do something fun today. Do something that will make yourself proud when you look back on it. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya!